What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV uh, with what seems to be the genesis of the new Westcott strobe system. And this is a really interesting job because it's multiple things. It's not just like a, a new addition of one light, but it's actually, they're showing how they're committed to bringing you a full system of strobes so you can mix and match, have options, price points, uh, all sorts of options out there for you to make the lighting system you need for your applications. We have the FJ400 over here, which we did a video on. Uh, you can see that down below. There's a link in the description. 400 watt second battery powered monolight. This is like the big one, right? Well, they just introduced these two. So we have the FJ200 and the FJ80. So just like this is FJ400 for 400 watt seconds, FJ200, 200 watt seconds, 80 watt seconds. This is basically an on-camera speed light, but it also can be taken off at camera with radio triggering. Uh, we'll get into that in a second, actually, because they are, can all be triggered by the FJ XM2 trigger. And just like this trigger that we went over in this video about having a universal uh, foot, no matter what camera you're shooting, if it's Sony, Nikon, Canon, Olympus, Lumix, whatever, this has a shoe that can talk to those cameras and has an adapter for Sony, so don't worry about that. But just like this has it, so does their FJ80 speed light. So that's super interesting. This means that if you're someone that's running multiple camera systems like me, or if you're on a content team where there's multiple people using the gear that have different uh, brand systems, or maybe you're a wedding shooter and you have you, uh, pickup hires of second shooters that use different camera systems, they can all use the same light because they'll just work with the shoe for TTL and talking to the camera. There's no need to buy like dedicated strobe for every single camera now, which is awesome. Uh, the other thing that makes this really unique, it's of course it's a round headed flash, which is where the industry is going, but a lot of things that we're seeing come up forward in the industry on everything from light meters to cameras and everything in between is full touch screens. That means I'm not playing around with this light trying to figure out which button to hold and which dial to spin and whatever. All I have to do is if I want to change it, I tap it, arrow up and down, I can change full stops, tenths of stops, change my zoom, turn on the modeling light, whatever I want to do. Speaking of the modeling, by the way, it has a built-in LED modeling light, which will zoom with the head. I guess I can show you against the wall later. We'll do that while we're actually shooting. I'll show you guys what's up with that. I just think it's super uh, intuitive as far as I want to do something with this light. I want to change this setting. How do I change that setting? All you have to do is see it, tap it, and you can change it. Awesome. Also has 31 channels and groups going from A to U, which is super disappointing, Westcott. I wanted the entire alphabet A to Z, but you only gave me from A to U. That's insane. That's an insane amount of groups. 31 channels is great. So if you're shooting in some place, there's a other photographers and there's a bunch of other channels going on. If they happen to have Westcott lights, you have 31 channels to jump to to make sure no one's interrupting your workflow, which is super great. It also is a magnetic mounting point. So there is modifiers that are coming out with this right now. This plastic orb right there for diffusion, magnetic, snap and go, and you're ready. I mean, we're seeing a lot of trends in the industry like magnetic touchscreens, all sorts of stuff coming to fruition and Westcott is definitely keeping that in mind with the way they're designing these lights. The other thing that I thought was really cool about this was built-in quarter 20 thread. So this is a really uh, nice feature to have. Usually with speed lights, when you take them off camera, it's kind of a juggling act how to mount them somewhere. You have to buy something with a shoe on it that clamps or screws down or has a socket on it. But here, you can literally just screw in anything that's a quarter 20. Tripod head, uh, gorilla pod, which is what I'm gonna do today because this thing is so light. This might be the lightest in, the lightest light, the lightest in weight speed light I think I've held of this size where it's under a pound. So I'm not worried about rigging and that's one of the benefits of speed lights that they're so light, so portable and so versatile. The display, by the way, huge and bright. This is a big, big plus for me because when you have this off camera and it's in play, the size of this display and how bright it is, I don't have to worry about squinting my eyes at a tiny little LCD screen with little watch numbers on it that I'm trying to figure out where my power settings are or if it's on the right channel, whatever. When it's off my camera and in play, I can face the data that I need towards me and move the head to wherever I'm trying to light it to, which is one reason I really love speed lights, but the screen being this big, huge, huge plus to me, huge. All right, that's a lot to do with this. I guess I should also mention 
lithium ion rechargeable batteries. So you have fast recycling time. You don't have to buy a bunch of double A's. You don't have to worry about things like that. You can just charge this while you're out there in the field, have a couple of these and you're pretty much good to go. Uh, they're claiming you get about 400 full power flashes on this battery. That's what I'm seeing in the specs. Uh, you know, results may vary, but that's what is written down there. Let's move on to the 200 watt second light. So the FJ200 is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's battery powered. It's pretty small as far as uh, diameter goes. And because of that, it's got a proprietary mount, but they are putting out uh, modifiers that will snap into the head pretty easily. And that's pretty awesome. So they are definitely uh, fleshing out the system with more and more modifiers, which is one thing I love about Westcott is that they have so many options for modification. And that's kind of what they sent me here today is a ton of stuff to play with. We're gonna get into that in a little bit. Let me just go over a little more of this light. So both the Speedlight and the FJ200 have USB ports for firmware updates. So if there are bugs or things that uh, they wanna add onto it or change the interface, it is supported. Uh, at this time, it is not for powering out of the wall, though I did try it. It wasn't doing it. And the specs list this as a firmware update kind of option only. So just be aware of that. We're looking at a battery powered strobe here. Full color screen, once again, it isn't touch on this one, but it's very visible. I'm digging it. I think it's really good. Uh, and of course they have a quarter 20 mount on this one as well, but it also has an optional pivot 5 8 socket that you can just put right on there and get it right onto a stand right out of the box and you're good to go. Uh, this is up to you. Now there's a lot of options for uh, mounting to this because there's a lot of third party Bowens mount adapters. You guys have seen them all out there. There's a bunch of different brands out there that basically clamp down to the head and give you a Bowens mount and you're good to go for anything. I actually wanna use this with an umbrella today because I'm really, really psyched on Westcott's umbrellas. So I'm actually going to use a diffused 53 inch umbrella. So this small light with a 53 inch light source that packs down pretty much this small on the side of a roller, you're talking about smaller and smaller gear, more and more power, more and more options, right? It makes things easier. A 53 inch umbrella, that's close to a four foot, five foot octobox if you think about it. But we're gonna play around with that. I'm gonna get into that. We're gonna mix all this stuff together and get going. So let me call Pauline in here, actually put this stuff into play and let's see what we get. Okay, so just like I said, the speed light is super light. So I'm going to put it up here with a Joby uh, Gorilla Pod really quickly. And because I have the diffuser dome on it, what's gonna happen is because the light's basically going everywhere, it's spilling in almost 360 degrees, we're actually gonna get a background light and Paulina is going to get a hair light with one light. So we're getting a two for one there really easily. And I'm able to see all my settings from where I'm standing because I have the swivel head and a huge display. So right there, huge application. Normally you guys see me use the speed lights as like an on-camera trigger and on-camera fill light, but you see me do that at 800 videos. You can see that on any other video I do. I really want to do a two for one deal with the speed light over there. Now I got to figure out a key light for Polina and a fill light for Polina. And I have two lights here, right? I have the FJ400 and I have the FJ200, the brand new one. So I'm going to take the FJ400 and make this my key light. I'm going to pull out this uh, Joel Grimes beauty dish. I don't know who this guy is, but he's on, on everything. So he's gotta be something special, right? Westcott is the originators of this design where you basically have this center rod that you push down and you have a built box pretty much. So we, with the deflector plate in there, we're gonna be able to get pretty much our hotspot taken out of the equation while getting some diffused light from the front of this beauty dish. And we just do a nice symmetrical key light on uh, Paulina and sculpt out her like awesome features, right? But then I'm gonna have drop shadows and I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with that fill to fill in those shadows. Let's set up the key light first. I'm just going to pop off the reflector and mount the Joel Grimes dish really quick onto the FJ400. All right, so we'll keep it there. And don't forget high leg, all my weight goes over the high leg and sandbag on the high leg is how you do it. Pivot up, right angles, pivot down, right angles. And then I can get into position to light Polina how I'd like. I'm gonna actually give myself a little bit more stretch. And I'm gonna turn this guy on. Is on, all right. Okay, so I have my key light set up group A. My background light is gonna be group C. 
So I'm gonna set up a fill light as group B. So now it's gotta be, what am I gonna do to fill in the light that's gonna give me some drop shadows on Polina with the Joel Grimes Beauty Dish? Like I said, I really like Westcott's umbrellas and this Apollo umbrella with this diffuser is really gorgeous. So something that packs down this small gives me this enormous light source. And I have 200 watt seconds to play with here. That's a lot of power to fill an umbrella and I'm gonna go do it, you know? So while the FJ200 comes with that 5.8 socket that does have an umbrella adapter in it, uh, I'm gonna use this bracket. There's a third party bracket to switch to Bowen's mount. In case I don't wanna use the umbrella anymore, I still have it mounted. I take the umbrella out. I just snap in any box that has a Bowen's mount speed ring on it and I'm good to go again. So it's just thinking ahead just in case because honestly, we're just trying stuff out and we're gonna see what we get. Uh, but I'm gonna put this diffuser sock on first, put the light through and then mount an umbrella. Now, before I put the, the, the uh, diffuser on the entire thing, what I'm gonna do is totally cheat and use their diffuser dome to fill as much of the umbrella as possible. Remember, when you put on the modeling light, you can kind of see how much of the umbrella you're filling based on how far it is and how, how close it is to the light. If I don't wanna have the whole thing filled up, I can pull it in closer. If I wanna fill up more, I can pull it out a little more, but I just wanna get as much distribution as possible. So I'm just gonna pop this diffuser dome on really quick. All right, so now essentially what I have here is a wall of light behind me that's gonna wash forward. So when I start lighting Paulina, and the drop, shadows drop, I can pull this in and just have this whoosh wash of light. Now, if this is maybe two stops under from my key, it's not gonna overpower my key, but it will fill in those shadows and I can dial those shadows in to what density I want. Remember, you shape your subject with the key, you clean up those shadows how you want density wise with the fill. All right, so that was some really quick three-point lighting. It's basically school picture looking, but you get the point. We're just trying some things out. Now what I'm gonna do is give her a commercial white background using this giant diffuser as my background. So I'm just gonna ask Paulina to step this side for me really quick. I'm gonna grab a shorty stand because what's basically gonna happen here is I'm keeping my key light right where it was so that we have the exposure on Paulina and we like what we got there. Now I'm gonna take, because it's, it's cordless and we were talking about battery operated lights, I can literally just take it off the stand, move it into set, and put it right behind Paulina. Now the key here is you want this to illuminate the diffuser, but you don't want the, the light from this rushing around so much that we get some uh, fogging or flare or anything like that. So it's a little bit of game of uh, distance of this to Paulina. It's also a game of power ratios. So we're gonna just go for it, do it by feel, and see what we get. So she's literally gonna block this light. So Paulina, let's get you back in here. Yep, she blocks the lights, awesome. <laughs> so I'm gonna move this over just a touch and I'm gonna quickly take a shot with my key light off and I'm gonna take the speed light out of the equation because we're not doing a hair light, we literally have a giant light source behind her. All right, 
So we did the commercially white background, but we did it with just a key light and no fill. Sometimes you can get away with that light rushing forward, hitting this diffuser and creating a bit of a weird fill feel. Didn't really get that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this speed light that I had on this Gorilla Pod, still keep the dome on it, and just rest it on this chair in front of Polina. And this, I'm going to dial down pretty considerably. And all we're gonna do is just dust some light into the shadows to not change the lighting pattern. And we're gonna keep all that definition, but we're gonna open up the density of those shadows a little bit. So let's give this a shot. This was in group C, so I'm going to go into group C and put it into manual. And I'm just gonna dial it down to about, eh, let's go with three. So it's, it's there. It's also pretty close in proximity. This is why I love speed lights. You just put them anywhere, point them anywhere, and you're good to go. And they, they weigh nothing, and they just exist. I just love it. Now right, let's give this a shot, Paulina. And you can actually see how the shadows under her chin and in her cheekbones actually open up a little bit. Okay, beautiful right there. Great, great, great. All right, so we're moving pretty quick here. I opened up some shadows using this uh, dome diffuser on, on the FJ80 as a fill-ish sort of thing. Now I kind of want to use the dome on the FJ200 as a key light. So I'm going to do an under over type thing. What we probably are going to get here is something a little eerie feeling. I got this kind of vibe from the hat with Blair Witch. I don't know, I'm weird. And I know you're like the happiest model we have ever, but I'm going to go for a little bit of a, a drama kind of off-putting feel. So let's see if we can do that. right here with your eyes. All right, so that was super fun getting a little creepy with it, which is more my style. Uh, but as you see with this setup, I was really short on the lens, 24 millimeter, 35 millimeter for some of the uh, vertical shots, which is giving it more of a lonesome, isolating feel. With the white background, the commercial looking headshotty light, I stretched the lens out to like 85, 120 even, just to compress that white against her backy as much as I could. Compression, you know, based on perspective, well, I know all that, keep it, the nerd comments down to a minimum. Um, but you could just see how much stuff I just went through with three lights, a few modifiers, and stuff that's really easy to carry with you. Uh, so I think Wes got some putting, piecing together this uh, strobe system for a little bit, and I think they're just ready for you guys to try it out for yourselves. So having said that, if you have any questions for me about my experience using the FJ80, the FJ200, the FJ400, I will do my best. Just ask me down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like, share this video around. Don't forget to subscribe and the bell for more videos like this. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.